truck. Should we move Mama Cap? Yeah, I think we need to move Mama Cap. Come on. Keep going. Right, it's gotten bigger, and it will continue. It's gonna go in a funny way, but it will work itself out. The last one did, and she's not gonna let me work. Now you're gonna have to move. <laughs> All right, I got them in my four cups, and. I noticed on one of my videos I put up that I went backwards with it. You can't tell it, so I guess it's not going to hurt it any. So, uh, the easiest way to do it is to pick this cup up, scoot this one over, then bring this one over, and then set this one down. And I took my pins out because my pins were getting in my way and messing me up. So now the next thing I want to do here is put this down to where it's easier. And then we'll go in. And we got to make sure we get uh, between the, the uh, threads because if you don't, the needle will go through these and it will be harder to pull this through. So we want to make sure that we don't, and to keep it flat, uh, the last one that I did, I kept it flat all the time and it worked out really, really well. And you can make these uh, 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 cups Lo uh, longer so you can put them in the cups these right here I'm going to have to get that one and be done with it wasn't it that's strong <laughs> not strong I get it I was talking and lost where I was going at <laughs> yeah mama cap I hear you over there uh, the last one, I think I had six or eight of these going, not, uh, not four, but it's just as good. All right, let's see if I can't get started here, and we're going to, see here, this right here ain't going to work. It's through the material, and we want it through the opening now see here the difference in it it won't go through the material so we're going to want to make sure <laughs> all right now all righty let's see what we can do about making this one uh yeah mama cat what are you doing yeah so if we can't get another one here put it going or his life up so um let's get into it Sh uh, share with me and the audience uh the story that made you a whipping boy i mean how did this all start start out for you as far as uh was it just like you were having dreams and that's how memories started coming back or what um no the memories just started coming back just regular uh, during the daytime I okay. didn't have any I didn't have any dreams I'm a lucid dreamer and I can control my dreams anyway so um I I just started to have the memories like I, I thought uh I thought they were movie uh, chunks or something like that for some movie I didn't see because uh it was so realistic and so vivid and so real I was like uh what is this and then 
you know, I started seeing a little bit more and I saw that it was in my barn because the first memories that came back were the barn encounters where uh, this juvenile Sasquatch had um, started showing up after we moved to this house. Um, we moved to the house in October of 1976, so I didn't really play in the barns until the following year. So that's, you know, the summer and spring was when everything started happening, but it started before that um, at a lake called Strawberry Lake, which is in Albert, Michigan, which is ended up being about a mile or uh, an hour and a half north from uh, where we had moved to from Grand Rapids. And uh, I'm saying that uh, this is the same Sasquatch. I just, uh, there's there's no way that can be two Sasquatches that I've had friends with. They did too many similar things. And I, I put it together uh, after I'd, uh, and, and the weird thing is about the memories of the Strawberry Lake came after the, the um, because it was so much earlier, I don't know, but like, uh, it was, it was two years earlier. I was eight years old and it happened at Strawberry Lake. And, uh, where am I going with this? I forgot. It, it was just bizarre the way it came back because it didn't make any sense. It didn't come back in order whatsoever. And, uh, um, I've never been normal, I guess, because, uh, you know, I've been hypnotized to forget about this. So I don't know what normal memory recall is like the, uh, the, what I did was um, when I started recalling a lot of this stuff is I got a hold of a hypnotherapist that uh, somebody uh, hook, hooked me up with from uh, Georgia. The uh, I forget his name. Uh, um, uh, it was a museum down in Georgia, um, Bigfoot Museum. Anyway, he hooked me up with this uh, hypnotherapist, and he told me a, um, a method, how to remember stuff. is like uh, the fragment that you remember... Uh, that's vivid you have to remember just before what happened and just before what happened afterwards just before and just and then you do that repetitiously to the memory that you re recall before that and then you open it before that and then after and then it opens up but it, it's not something that's uh that you can do quickly it took me years to remember everything sometimes it would come back in blocks but um I eventually remembered the Strawberry Lake stuff. What was weird about it was I had the footage the whole time, and I never, because it was so, it was on a, a Super 8 film, and it was on the on the reels, and I didn't get them transferred over, and I had these things the whole time, and I never really took a close look at them until I got them cleaned up, and then I could see what was on there, and then my memory just went kabam like that, and I started going up there, I think it was 2019, to Strawberry Lake, and the campground's not there anymore, and there's houses on the lake, but there's a whole bunch of state land behind it. So I would go camp back there and go walk over the lake through the woods and uh, go back to the mine counter areas. And that was opening all sorts of memories. And uh, that helped a lot, and I was getting a lot of encounters there. I've got it on video. Um, uh, you know, that's later that I can talk about them. Um, of course, I had the, when I was getting a lot of my video, when I first started going up there, I had the old GoPros, um, had issues with, um, when I see them up on a tree, I saw a couple of juveniles. I got this on, on my channel. And, uh, when you look up at the sun and the sun's behind them, you can't hardly see the, you know, the subject in the tree because of the, the sun blocking it out. But this, these new GoPros will not do that, but the old ones had a little, little bit of an issue. And I thought it was most people go, oh, it's a tree knot. It's not a tree knot. Um, it's not a tree growth. And I saw it from a long ways away. I saw it climb up there, and I had my GoPro. But I, what I started doing early off was, like, putting them on the front and the back and just going back and reviewing the video. And, um, I'll get to that. But uh, Strawberry Lake, that starts off in 1975 when I was eight years old. Um, before I got to Strawberry Lake that year, uh, my family took me, or it wasn't my immediate family. It was my... Uh, um, my aunt and some of my cousins were related to Tarzan Zubini. Uh, and this is in the winter, and we went to go see the, the circus. Um, and uh, since we're related to them, we got in behind, you know, the scenes when they're setting up, and I got to ride some elephants and play with some chimps there. And that's the key thing to everything, to my whole attitude towards the chimps. Because when we got to Strawberry Lake um, later that year, um, you know, me being eight years old and loving the outdoors, I would the first thing I would do is get out of the car, go run down to the lake, and uh, go try to find snakes, frogs, any wildlife. I just, you know, love that stuff. So um, I was seeing all sorts of things there that I didn't 
no existed, you know, like porcupines, beavers, cougars, bobcats, you know, there's like, so there's monkeys in the woods. Um, <laughs> makes perfect sense. <laughs> that year we went two different times. We went there, I think, early in June for like a, a longer weekend, but um, that's when I first started seeing them uh, and the, the logging incident happened, I think, that time. Um, and it was a short visit, and, my, and when we were going home, my parents still didn't believe me about it. They just thought I was seeing raccoons or something like that. There's no, there's no monkeys in the woods. Um, but I was seeing them popping out, and they're, they're following me around and stuff like that. And it was uh, four juveniles, two of them um, about the same size as me, and two of them that were really small. No, we, we um, we returned later. We found out that other people were seeing them. I'll get to that in a minute. But when I when I first started seeing them, um, the the biggest thing that happened that time with the first visit, the logging incident thing. There was two different logging incidents. One I wasn't there for, and this one I was there for. Um, I wanted to go around the lake, and I've been there like two years there before, and I don't know if there's any encounters that happened then. I don't remember. As um, far as I know, there wasn't. But what was going on behind the lake, which I think displaced the Sasquatch, is there were logging on this other side of the lake. There was like a um, a big swamp that was called Old Strawberry Lake. And on the other side of that in the state land, they're logging the um, the birch trees and the, uh, the pines and stuff like that. When they get too old, they'll take them down in certain sections out there. And I think that displaced the Sasquatch, honestly, because what happened next? I wanted to go walk around the lake, and my dad just got... Uh, a new canoe and he was out fishing in it and there was a, there was a, um a trail that went all around the lake that was you know full of campers that was along the lake shore and for some reason my dad decided i was there long enough and I was, you know that times were different back then i was eight years old and he was going to watch me go around the lake as he fished and i was supposed to stay on that trail but when i got to the the part of the lake which would be the the west side of the lake to where the um uh, the swamp was back there and there wasn't very many campers back there that that time so there was a bunch of empty camping spots and i started getting up there and they're walking alongside of me you know and i i didn't think anything i was a stupid eight year old oh these are monkeys you know <laughs> i went back there and i played with them in the in the in the, um the ferns for a while and just walked around the back of the swamp we played hide and go seek for i don't know how long in these ferns and we climbed a tree i was leaning over um over part of the swamp there. And this all happened really, it seemed like it happened really quickly, but I was told I was gone for three and a half hours. I can't even put together more than 40 minutes of it because I walked around the whole lake after this, but I saw the logging equipment back there after we were messing around with the other stuff and I wanted to go, I was eight years old, I, I wanted to go check out the equipment. I thought it was cool. Yeah. I went out and one was locked, the, the uh, front end loader was locked, but the um, the crane bulldozer type thing was open. So I, I got in there, you know, and I wasn't one of those kids and I, I'm not making up excuses. I didn't do any damage to this thing. I got in there and, and, and I just started playing around a little bit, you know, not really moving the levers around a lot, but just making car noises. You know, I thought I was you know, just playing around. I wasn't in there for more than a few seconds. And uh, uh, this one juvenile Sasquatch pushes me out of the way and gets on the, that seat and starts grabbing those, those levers and not making any verbal sounds. He grabs them with his feet and his arm, his hand, He's going like this and just pulls one of them things out. I don't know if the, like there was a set screw on the bottom of it or something. Wow. But he pulled the whole thing out and he starts beating the freaking instrument panel and beating the freaking the inside of this, you know, this cabin and this freaking uh, bulldozer thing or crane. And uh, I'm freaking out because I know it's loud enough to where the campers are going to hear it. And I'm, I'm like, I was eight years old going like, I'm going to get blamed for this. I can at least think that while I got out of there. I didn't know what they were doing. There's another one that was... Uh, got up on top of it and they were both beating the crap out of this thing just smashing the crap out of the logging equipment and i got out of there as fast as i could you know and, and i went around to where uh the other side of the swamp was back to the trail where i was supposed to be and there was a guy standing there and he goes like what's going on back there do you come back there are you doing that and he's like he's i got the newspaper article from this too i found it there's a newspaper article written about it yes what, what so what was it like kid log, destroys yeah, kids. It, the, the exact wording i've got it on my phone too, I can show you it later. It says, um, um, second logging incident uh, blamed on two uh, teenagers from Flint. Um, and the witness said that <laughs> the two teenagers were barefoot wearing all black with hoodies on. Because they left tracks, right? And wow. I was barefoot too. And like, uh, this was on, 
on the weekend so the vlogging guys weren't there until Monday, right? We were going to leave on, like, I think it was like a Monday afternoon or something like that. So they got back and they actually um, questioned me about it and brought me down there and they saw the, the for my prints went, that the other ones were a little bit bigger. And uh, it just so happened the other friend that I made there, his name was Randy too, but he was a, he was 11 and I was 8. And um, they blamed on him and his friend um, because they didn't like him. They were hippies and they were part of a nudist colony and there was a cop that would go out there. Back uh, in the 70s. Yeah, it, yeah, that was the 70s thing. And uh, there was a cop that would stay out there um, camping with his son on the weekends, and he didn't like them. And I became entangled with this this thing to where he didn't, you know, like these people, and I was hanging around with them. That that leaded him to blaming him and this kid for everything that happened out there. Wow. And that's what the newspaper article says, too. But um, that, was, that happened in the, the first visit that I went in june and we came back in august and we stayed a whole week out there and when we got back the parents finally found out you know who my mom did i think it was um he's my mom but it was my dad because my dad started hanging around my with them um uh, my mom started hanging around with my friend's mom and my dad started uh fishing with uh my friend's dad and he would take off and uh they were still mentioning uh, my mom said something about me seeing monkeys in the woods and this other lady goes like I haven't found this article and it's out there yet I gotta go all the way back to Everett and look through all the microfiche again there because I don't know exactly when it was and the article she pulled out of there she's going like no this is uh, aren't ch these aren't he's not seen stuff there's a chimp there these, this circus came through here and we think when they lost a chimp when they came through here and because they they had all their equipment, and they they were going from you know, one town to the other, and they stayed there the year before or something like that. She showed my mom the article, and it said Strawberry Lake. Um, our kids playing with a lost chimp. I'm looking for this article yet. Hopefully, I can find it. Wow. And uh, when it, when I came back, uh, this this my my friend's mom's telling me that or telling my mom this, and I'm sitting at the picnic table. My other friend's up by the lake shore or something like that, just a little ways away. My uh, my dad and uh, his dad were out fishing, and we're just sitting there. And, and uh, my friend's mother named him Sammy. I mean, this is the same Sasquatch that has two names now. <laughs> when I get get to it later, my uh, um, later years that he's named Mike because uh, the other neighbor could just you know named him that. But anyway, she decided that his name was Sammy. We're sitting there, and she tells my mom this. And 50 feet away, there's a tree that she leaves bananas and apples. Um, and he comes up there and they could see him, you know, and I was going, oh, my son's not crazy. <laughs> That's when my mom decided to try to get him on video. And all she had was that super eight, eight millimeter, like little tiny video. And, and uh, I do have footage of me with uh, sitting in the canoe on a lake shore, on the lake shore and the canoes on the, on the half in the water and, and half out of the water. And he's sitting there next to me outside of the canoe with his arm around me. And uh, there was a couple other ones the next Bigfoot? to it. Yeah, the juvenile Bigfoot, yeah. Wow. Sammy. And uh, she got that on a video, but it was blurry, of course. And um, that was because I think she tried to hurry and grab it. And she said she was lying on the ground and stuff, trying to take the footage. I remember her talking about that. I remember her being really depressed. It was it was blurry. It, wasn't, it, went, it was so blurry, I never really looked at it much. You can almost not even see it until I took it in my computer and I uh, edited it in my computer editor cleaned it up the best that I could and you could see the outline. You could see his hand on my shoulder and everything. His arm going around my shoulder. But he's got his head down and it's uh doesn't have any detail on it, but you can see the silhouette of him and you can see my mom move the camera up and when the, the other ones run up the tree right next to me, there was a birch tree. And uh my dad and uh my friend's dad never saw him. The the adult the adult males couldn't see him because they probably didn't trust the adult males. I don't know, but my mom and my friend's mom would see him, but they couldn't approach him. And when I did get back, my friend and uh, that was there the whole summer said he was playing with him the whole summer. And uh, there, was, there was other times to where <laughs> we'd go swimming, and of course we're, we're probably naked or something like that, and they're a little roped off section there, and I was eight years old, I didn't care. But out there playing in the water, and I, this is something I remember real distinctly, it just there wasn't a whole lot of interaction between us, you know, other than maybe this kid played with them even more than I did, but, uh, you know, they would hide all the time if somebody would walk along the trail. So they would they would pop out, you know, and we'd see them for a little bit of time, and uh, then they would hide, and we didn't know why they did that. We, didn't, we just thought they were chimps, you know? Yeah. And uh, there was one time where uh, 
he pops out, Sammy pops out, and this other friend of mine, his name is Randy, too, he goes like, oh, hey, Sammy, how's it going? And he starts splashing water on him. He's going like, chimps hate water, watch this. And I'm going like, what are you doing? Don't be mean to him. And like, he's going like this and stuff like this. And I was going like, he doesn't like it. Don't do that. And then he started splashing back, right? Sammy, the, the juvenile Sasquatch. And then pretty soon I started splashing him. And then the other, there was four of them. The other two, the other three Sasquatch came out. They turned around like they were digging a hole and they were just splashing water like that. So we were doing the same. We finally just gave up. So there were multiple Sasquatch there? Yeah, there was two that were the same size as Sammy. There was a, another one that was the same size as him and two small ones in the... in the Smaller than Sammy. Yeah. So they're like baby was, Sasquatch. Yeah, like about, like, they could barely even freaking... They couldn't even... I don't even think they could walk on their hind legs. They're on all fours all the time. Okay. And the, and of course, my friend's mom thought, oh, look at the, the, the chimps have survived out here and had babies, you know? Like... That's literally what we thought because nobody saw any large Sasquatch, you know, and nobody just thought, you know, because the adults wouldn't get close enough to see the difference between, a, a, you know, their differences, you know, in their facial stuff. And you see them from a distance. They look like a chimp at that age. You know, they're all black. And uh, and they do change color when they get older. I found that out because when I, when I did see him later, he had more of a brownish reddish tint to his to his hair. That's why I didn't recognize him when I thought it was a, his... Um, or orangutan, because my neighbor was telling me that, but I'll get to that. Um, that was pretty much the the st whole Strawberry Lake thing. There was a there was a lot of incidents like that, and we finally left that um, that August and went home. We were going to move uh, from Grand Rapids uh, to Alto, which is not very far from Grand Rapids. It's only about forty minutes, but it's, it's still an hour and a half from the from Strawberry Lake. And uh, like I said, we moved out there in uh, October of 76. So this was a, uh, a year later from the campground. And then, the you know, we moved there um, in the fall and I didn't start playing in the barns. It was an old farmhouse. had uh, a big hay barn, um, a milking barn, a milk cooling barn, and a, a chicken coop and, you know, several barns down there. Um, but they're all abandoned. You know, nobody used them for many, many years. They're all overgrown. That was my playland, <laughs> but I didn't start playing with him or playing down there and seeing him until like the following year, which would have been 77 because that was when it was warm out, you know, because we moved there in the fall. I didn't play down there much in the winter. And uh, when we first started seeing him, um, when I first started seeing him and my parents were seeing him uh, at a distance, there was always them running away on all fours from a distance. It looks like a dog. And mm -hmm. that's what we thought we were seeing. Another thing that was happening was uh, uh, there was a PVB poisoning on the cows uh, from 74 to 81 in uh, Michigan and some of the neighboring states where they got the uh, the feed and the fire retardant mixed up. They didn't know it right away. And there was all sorts of uh, problems with the cows dying and having uh, um, all sorts of growth growing on them and stuff. You know, I mean, they didn't know what was going on for a while. And uh, the state took control, and the, the farmers would, uh, you know, separate these sick or dead cows and put them in a pile that they designated where the state would come with a steak, a steak truck uh, once a week, pick up all these dead cows from all these spots where the, they would dump them and uh, take them to a mass grave up in Kalkaska. And uh, the dumping spot was right behind our barn. There was a creek that ran behind my barn, uh, all the way up to uh, to the north of us, to the the farm, and all the way south of us to the next neighbors, which is about a mile down the road. And uh, they would dump them right back there, and they bleed in the creek. And uh, my parents were seeing them back running back there toward the cows, but it was I don't know several acres away where you're seeing it, and we're seeing them run across there, and they look like dogs. So even when I got closer, when they were in the barn. Um, seeing them run away that he wasn't just coming out where I could see him and he would, you know, show himself. He was like hiding and running away. And I still thought I was seeing a dog. Um, this went on for a while and I still didn't have any friends in the area. Um, I met one friend on a Wednesday at some church thing. Um, I skipped over the, the, uh, I skipped over the, the Catholic part. Before I got to this, I got I got to go back. The Catholic school incident was the first part that uh, uh, the Strawberry Lake thing when we got back from uh, um, vacation, 
and we went to class and I was I was in the school uh, Blessed Sacrament for one year because my mother was uh, driving the bus there and they decided it was better for me to go there which it wasn't we and we got up in front of class and everybody told them what they did in the summer and I started telling them I was you know hanging out with a bunch of you know hippies in this nudist colony and playing with a bunch of chimps in the woods and that just started a huge fireball with the kids were like there's no such thing as chimps in the woods. You're crazy. And like, you know, <laughs> and and the nun teacher was like trying to get me to, you know, confess that I was lying and I wouldn't. She, she, you know, and I, it started a fight between some of the kids. And I, I actually got one of those, those kids as a witness. I called him and talked to him. He remembers that. I, I got to get him on camera with that. But uh, they made a big deal about it. And uh, they thought that I was trying to, you know, make this stuff up. And they took me down in the, the principal's office after she, you know, smashed my knuckles a few times with a with a ruler to try to get me confessed. That didn't work. So they took me down in the, the, the office and another old nun comes there and I did the same thing. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say I was lying. So she paddled me with this, this, this paddle they had in there until I, you know, she just couldn't paddle anymore. I didn't even shed a tear. You know, it's just like, I'm not lying. I sat there in the office for a while, and the weirdest thing happened was uh, they brought this younger nun, and it's a real heavy set, not like a fat nun, like a, like a big football player girl. Okay. She just started with a uh, you know being a nun, and they're going like, and this witness that I talked to knows all these names. I don't I don't remember what her name was. I have to I have to get on that and get the name from him yet. But uh, not like it's real important with the nuns. You know, they're probably all passed by now anyway. But uh. They introduced me to her, and she uh, they they said, "Well, she knows what you're talking about. They aren't chimps." And she goes, "Well, I played with them. I grew up on a farm, and it's going, they're evil. You know, they're good, like they can be seem really nice, but they're sexual deviants, and they're they're evil, and they can do rotten things. And they're uh, what do they call them? Um, the ne Neanderthal or not? Um, you know the Neanderthals? No, not Neanderthals. Uh, Jake Camp has yeah, the the fallen angels. The oh, you know, Nephilim. The, the Nephilim. That's what she called them. And she, you know, they they thought I was a devil child. They thought and you were a devil. They child? thought I was a devil child, and like that's what they would call me. And they put me in the counseling, and I was getting upset because uh, my friend Randy was getting in trouble for all that stuff up there, and I was supposed to go to court, and our car broke down, and we didn't go up there. And he ended up going, uh, you know, getting blamed for all that stuff. And to me, he's eight year old, and he was my, you know, an older friend. I thought he was the coolest person in the world, you know. And I was really getting upset about it. They decided to put me in counseling, and they erased my memory. Wow. So that uh, all right, okay. So that was with my parents' permission. No, that was they didn't have to do so much with the Sasquatch as me throwing a fit about my friend, you know, and and being a problem, you know, as a kid. And, uh, you know, they decided to put me in counseling. They thought that was the best thing to do. Was this so, like Catholic counseling? Yes. Wow. And uh, after that, they pulled me out of the school and put me in public school after that. But uh, I finished up in Grand Rapids at um, Eccles School in my end of third grade and a little bit of fourth grade there And uh, before I moved out to Caledonia out in the Alto area in the farmhouse. And uh, I didn't know they'd erased my memory that was a real big problem when he returned because i didn't recognize him right away randy no the when i moved out to the the farm and he started showing up i didn't know what he was gotcha. i didn't remember strawberry lake because they erased it wow i didn't remember randy i didn't remember anything until i saw that that footage that I had sitting in my freaking possession for decades. So just to, to, to keep everything on, on track here as far as how I'm tracking this, um, Strawberry Lake happens. You come back for summer break. You go to Catholic school. Uh, they they beat you for, for lying about a, a, a Sasquatch encounter that turns out at, at least one of them knew was true. Um, I, I'm curious, uh, and you may, probably don't have answers to this, but like I, I do wonder, did they know that you were telling the truth and trying to get you to say no? Uh, and then once you wouldn't submit to the beatings, and that's when they come like, okay, yeah, you're, you're right, this actually happens. By the way, uh, that happens at the school, and then you go into counseling through the school. Yep. And through the counseling at the school, they erase your memory. And. And now you're having encounters again, but you don't remember your first encounters. So it's almost like rewriting a whole new story for you. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. 
so so I go from being real comfortable around you know him at Strawberry Lake and you know having zero fear to like I don't know what's going on you know because um, I'll take off from where I did you know uh, a little while ago and we were you know the counters were just me seeing at first you know what I thought was a dog you know because he was always running away and he was small and he wasn't that, you know I mean when you get like like he was the same size as me and I was ten when I was seeing him at the at the farm. Um, you know, you put a 10 year old on the ground on all fours, you know, and if you actually run on all fours, you know, they're pretty small. I and mean, it just looked like us. Um, we, when we started seeing him, some of the other kids, we, we saw him run away. We thought he was a Rottweiler or something. Mm. Because actually, back then, not many people back in 1977 had Rottweilers. And we'd just see pictures of them, and they were big, stocky dogs, you know. And that's what we thought we were seeing at first. <laughs> because we're stupid kids. Um, um, the first uh, real uh, weird encounters happened uh, when this one kid I met from, uh, uh, it was another Catholic thing that I went to during like the week during the summer. This is in Caledonia and we're at some church thing and I met this kid, uh, we'll call him Mike K. And there's two boys named Mike, um, I'll get to that. And that also turned out to be a name that the uh, one of the kids named the Sasquatch because he could say that, but I'll get to that. We went up to uh, this kid that I met at the church came over on like a Wednesday. We didn't have anything to do. Uh, we played around in the barns, and for some reason, <laughs> back then, I mean, the, these woods were three miles away, um, and it was okay for us to go play up in the woods. I wouldn't let my kids do that. Yeah, but the world's <laughs> different now. I mean, like the, my mom used to let me run all over the place, know, but we I lived just, rural life, and well, it was okay. I, it just sounds so weird because, like, we we're both. I think Mike was nine; he hadn't turned ten yet, and I was ten. And we went three miles away up to this woods, and it wasn't it wasn't a real big woods. Um, it's a it's a small chunk of land uh, that's about you know 